Hi. What I want to talk about right now is uh, a type of reduced current or reduced voltage motor starter that we can sometimes see used in the field. Uh, so this one that we're going to talk about is called a part winding motor starter. Um, again, why we want to use one of these types of different starting methods is just to bring down that inrush current when we start a motor to reduce our load on the system and possibly get some smaller conductors uh, and maybe reduce some tripping, things like that. Uh, so with this part winding starter, uh, it is a specific type of motor, uh, so you want to ensure that your motor can do part winding starting. Um, essentially how it works is the motor has two different windings uh, in parallel on top of each other, uh, usually in this Y formation like this. Uh, so the motor leads that we'll see brought out to that junction box are T1, T2, T3. There's the internal Y connection and then T7, T8, and T9, again with their internal Y connection. Now the idea here is we're gonna basically start half of the motor to get it up to spinning, and then we're gonna bring the other half online for our full voltage run, or our full speed, full load run. Uh, so our control schematic looks something like this. Basically we would hit the start button, our start coil would energize, as well as our timing relay would energize, closing these instantaneous contacts. When that start coil energizes, over here, our starting power contacts energize, current will flow through and energize one of my two sets of windings. The motor will start. After a couple seconds, usually about two seconds we see, uh, the timing relay will finish timing and this TDOE or time delay on energization contact is gonna close, which is gonna put power to my run coil which is going to change the state of all my run contacts, bringing my other set of windings online. Uh, so what this kind of gives us is at start, um, so at start, we see our current, our I at start, is approximately 60 to 65 percent of what it would be at a full voltage uh, if we were to just start this motor both at the same time, full voltage start. All right, so we can see that great reduction in current, which is really good for us. One of the issues that we see with this motor is that my torque at start is very, very poor, right? So I'm not going to get the 60 to 65 percent. Uh, and just depending on the motor, you're actually going to get about 40 to 50 percent of what we call our full voltage starting torque, right? So these motors are specifically for loads that are either a no load at start or a very low load at start. So we can get that motor up and started, then bring on our other contactor, our run contactor, and then start adding load onto that. Uh, the very last thing with these motors is sizing those overloads, right? So we always need to make sure as an electrician or an installer, whenever we're working on these, we size our overloads correctly. So when we think about this, if we're thinking about overloads, they're to be used when the motor is running, right? The overloads do nothing at start. The overloads are for when the motor is in the running, running. So basically when we look at this, if I'm current and I come down line two, I'm splitting into two and then going to through two separate overloads. So in order to size our overloads, what we are gonna do is we're gonna take our FLA, our full load current, Divide it by two, because there's those two paths for current to flow. Then we're gonna multiply it by whatever our service factor multiplier is. And if you're not sure about that service factor multiplier, uh, just check section 28 of your code book, overload sizing. Basically, that's gonna direct you on what your service factor multiplier is. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching.